When installing a camshaft, you need to ensure that its relationship to the crankshaft is degree perfect. After all, the camshaft is responsible for coordinating all of the valve timing events in the engine. While some people would just line up the dots on the cam and crank gears and call it good, if you want to ensure the accuracy of your cam timing, you need to degree your camshaft. With the help of goods and tools, we're going to show you how. Now, to degree your cam, you'll need a few simple tools at the bare minimum. A degree wheel, a dial indicator with a magnetic base, and some sort of pointer. That can be as simple as a piece of coat hanger wire bent to shape. You can get super fancy with all these tools, but you can get accurate readings with the simplest versions of them with a little bit of care. With the timing set adjusted to zero degrees of advance or retard, and the degree wheel bolted to the crankshaft, the first step is to establish true top dead center. First, we get close by zeroing the indicator at the highest reading of piston number one's travel. Then, we set our pointer to the top dead center mark on the degree wheel for a rough TDC. While this might seem like true top dead center, this is only close. The next step can be done with a dial indicator or with a hard mounted piston stop. Either method will use the same principle to find true top dead center. That is, it'll measure two points equidistant apart and then split the difference. We'll be using a dial indicator. So you can set your reference position to whatever distance you want, as long as you use the same reference front and back. For this one, we're gonna use 200 thousandths of an inch. We'll spin the engine over until the dial indicator reads 200 thousandths after top dead center and record that reading on the degree wheel. Then we'll slowly rotate the crank towards top dead center and stop when the indicator reads 200 thousandths before top dead center. Recording the reading at that point, we'll then take those two readings combine them, and divide by two. If that number is the same as what the pointer is reading, you're at true top dead center. If not, adjust the pointer to that number without moving the degree wheel, that's very important, and then repeat the process. That should show that both readings are the same before and after top dead center. Once those readings are the same, you're at true top dead center on the wheel. With the degree wheel now trued up, it's time to degree the cam. We're going to move the dial indicator from the piston to the number one intake lobe through the lifter hole. We're going to repeat the exact same process as we did to find top dead center, except we're going to use 50 thousand of an inch before and after the peak of the cam lobe. A quick note with this setup is to always measure the lift going the same direction of rotation. Besides being accurate methodology, if you reverse the crank using the crank bolt, you run the risk of loosening it and losing the zero of your degree wheel. If that happens, you need to start the truing process all over again. As we rotate the cam, we stop at 50 thousandths of an inch before peak lift and record the reading on the degree wheel. We then rotate through peak lift and stop at 50 thousandths of an inch after peak lift. Record the reading once again, take those two numbers, add them together, and divide by two. That is your installed center line of the camshaft. You can then compare that to what your cam card calls for and adjust accordingly. So, whether you're looking to adjust your cam's timing or just want to ensure that it's exactly what the cam card calls for, degreeing your cam is an important part of any cam swap. Now that you know how easy it is, there's no excuse to blindly trust the dots anymore.